Kieran from Irish Football Fan TV here, and uh, we just finished up nil all here um, at the Tala Stadium between Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk. Uh, a night of many draws tonight, apart from obviously Sligo winning 2 1, but across the board it was uh, nil all across the board draws. Um, what's your thoughts on the on the scores tonight? Yeah, well, as you said, with the with the results across the rest of the league, I'd actually take it as a good point uh, in the sense that. A lot of the teams, the likes of uh, Cork, Waterford, Pats, Drew as well, so it basically means that we didn't lose any points, I guess, in that regard. It wasn't the greatest spectacle in the world, a game of very few chances. Um, I wasn't expecting much out of the game because we have quite a poor record against Dundalk in Tala. They like playing here, it suits them with the big wide open pitch. Uh, but I was a little bit surprised, thankfully, with the little amount of threat that they posed. Uh, they didn't have any chances themselves. Wasn't the greatest spectacle, but I'd actually see it as a point gained rather than you know than a poor draw. After the Bose game on Monday, like, how, how, what was your feeling about the lineup today? Yeah, I mean, well, I knew we were going to struggle because Ethan Boyle obviously pulled up, uh, looked like he was struggling. Uh, Watt was uh, pulled up with an injury as well. Obviously, we had the sending off of Green, so I think together with injuries and obviously Green being suspended, I knew it was going to be a, it was going to have to be a bit of a reshuffle. I was surprised that Sean Cavanagh started on the bench. I'm a fan of Sean Cavanagh, particularly when he plays in a more advanced role. Uh, I like him getting forward. I think he's a, a good technical footballer. Um, but yeah, we had no real shape in the first half, to be honest with you. Voyage up top offered very little. But to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the one up top system that Stephen Bradley has you know, been playing with over the last two, two and a half years. So to be honest with you, when we come into these games and we're playing up front, unless we have someone like you know Twig back in the day who's going to hold the ball up and pose that threat from set pieces, I always feel like we're going to struggle to score. The reshuffle didn't really surprise me, but thankfully we got away with it. So. <laughs> A few fans seem to not be not happy tonight in regards to um, maybe the system that Bradley's playing, and uh, maybe it's it's not so much a lack of goals, but just the lack of actually in terms of he's not anchoring in many chances. Would you, would you how do you feel about that yourself? Yeah, no, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, we scored the last minute winner against Waterford through a set piece, scored set piece here last week against Derry through a penalty. Uh, so I think what two out of our four goals have been via a set piece. Um, it's funny, actually. I, I I read something online during the week about our previous or one our, uh, Michael O'Neill, who was obviously manager when the times were really good. And one of the things he said was, at League of Ireland level, football can be quite simple in that you get the ball wide, deliver into two strikers, and you'll create chances. Under this current system, we we never have that threat, and you never feel as if we're going to have the pattern of play to create those chances particularly with the incision like if you look at the likes of the two most creative players that we have are Mekinif and uh, Jack Byrne Jack Byrne looked absolutely fantastic in the first 30-40 minutes in the match against Waterford was creating chances uh, putting balls through the centre of the fence getting in behind um, and since then we haven't been doing that and you know, when you when you don't have McInniff and you don't have uh, Jack Byrne in those advanced roles that are able to hold the ball up and then create to the lone striker, there's very little that you can offer because we don't play with the traditional wingers out wide that are going to deliver crosses. So you're absolutely spot on. I, I don't quite know where the threat of the football is going to come from or the chance they're going to come from, but sure, we'll see. We've been putting it up with it for two and a half years now, so he's not going to change it. Bradley's not going to change his system, so it is what it is. So how are you feeling after the game now in terms of with the season, the rest of the season to come? Um, Obviously, no, this was your third game in seven days, like a lot of the other teams now in the in the in the league. And come next Friday, when he's play Pats, yeah. that's going to be your fifth game now in 14 days, which is pretty mad now before the international break. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling now ahead of the rest of the season, and what do you want to see change? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, in in, in terms of what I'd like to see change at this stage. I don't have any strong opinions on it yet because I know this sounds quite pessimistic, but I actually came into the season expecting that we finished third, fourth, best case scenario anyway. I didn't feel that we would be able to compete with Dundalk. I certainly thought that we wouldn't be able to con uh, compete with Cork and Dundalk, who obviously have been you know, so dominant over the last three, four years. Cork obviously have fallen away. They've lost players. I'm not sure if they have faith in Caulfield. So maybe we will compete a little bit higher than third fourth so in terms of like you know dramatic change i wouldn't i wouldn't be looking to instigate anything right now but it is quite bruising on the teams like we're playing finn harps on monday finn harps have proved that they're adept at getting results already they're battling they're a different side than they were two years ago um and then we go and play play against pat so you know it's, it's wearing on the bodies of the lads it's 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 not easy um, you're the only team playing on monday as well yeah correct exactly um and as i say with the with the injuries and the suspension that we recently had as well um 
Bolger came off the pitch there looking a little bit gingerly as well. So, you know, if he's injured as well, it's stretching the it's stretching the squad even more. But as I say, going back to your original question, in terms of what I'd like to see change and what my hopes are, I'm happy enough to just plug away and see how this system works and have faith in Bradley for what he's doing. I don't have much faith, but you never know. The board certainly aren't going to change, so we'll just have to stick with it. In terms of hopes of the season, hope to have a good cup run in the FAI Cup because it obviously means a lot to us. We've won it 24 times. It, it's dear to our hearts, so if we could compete for the FAI Cup or even get a run at it, that would be amazing. Bowes got to the semi-final last year, so it can be done, even if you've got a, you know, a pretty bang average side. Um, but in terms of the league, I still think second third best case scenario I think Dundalk are going to slowly but surely get there I think you know they had big injuries to McElhaney Robbie Benson they're still getting used to it uh, under Perth I think they slowly but surely will actually get the gears going and, and, and be the best side in the country so I don't think we'll be able to compete with that but if we could get a European uh, spot keep the 250 grand coming into the coffers makes a big big difference so that'd be my hope and a good cup run yeah. well thanks very much for your time and uh, really appreciate it yeah my pleasure okay. thanks very much yeah cheers